Adam Azer and Dan Schneier welcoming you to a live edition of Fantasy Football Today right here on YouTube.com slash Fantasy Football Today. Oh, what's up, Dan? Cold? <laughs> who, wears a, who wears a hoodie in the house? The you, know, you know, I was wearing the zip-up, the North Face CBS Sports zip-up that they gave me, the greatest piece of clothing I've ever been given by a company yesterday or on Monday's podcast. I didn't hear anything about that. So what's the difference between a hoodie, an Under Armour hoodie, and a zip-up? What's really the difference? I actually was going to call you out on it yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> what's the big deal? Look, it's cold times here in the Northeast yeah. these days, right? I, the was greatest... little, I wear hoodies in the house. Don't worry yeah, about it. Yeah, I like hoodies are comfortable, man. You know what actually is my favorite combo? Hoodies and shorts. That's the best combo there is. Now, there's specific kind of weather for that. This is not that kind of weather. It's already broken and it's got too cold now in the Northeast. We're stuck. I feel like there, our last nice day was last Saturday and now we're just kind of like stuck with this. But, oh, yeah, yeah. Last yeah, Saturday. Like, well, we're not we it's a, get outside because yeah. this is it. Yeah. This is it. That was it. And now we're it. like, now it's <laughs> nasty. It's raining. It's cold. So I can't, I have to retire the shorts. But the step up for me is to go hoodies. I am a hoodie in the house kind of guy. And, I, and, I, and I'm, you know what? I'm not going to be talked out of it. I'm, I'm hoodie in the house guy. All, right. uh, all right. I'm not going to get into fantasy football just yet because we have a bit of a late arriving crowd. So I'm going to, well, we'll talk a little bit. We'll talk a little bit. We'll wait hit for more. that like button, please. Yeah, hit the like Enough. button. We're giving away some Paramount Plus subscriptions. And uh, the more likes we get, the more we'll give away. We have a YouTube poll. Which Paramount Plus show interests you the most? Oh, can I vote on this? Yeah. All you got to do is go to YouTube. Uh, well, to I want to make sure Thomas put one of the best shows they offer on there. Is it The Offer? No. 1883? No. Star Trek Strange New Worlds? Heard that's great, but I haven't seen it, but no. Tulsa King? No. Then he didn't put it on. <laughs> it's one of the longest running shows. It's a lifetime goal of mine to be on this show, Adam. Can you guess what it is? The Price is Right. I know. No. Survivor. Thomas? Oh, you know I'm a fan? Did you know I was a fan, Thomas? No, you just said longest running show, and it's yeah. cool to be on the show. I don't yes. know what other show you can. If I ever make a move up the ranks at CBS, and I can like get my hands on somebody who can make decisions for it, like big decisions and swing things, I want to be on that. That's my lifelong goal to be on this show. It is so much like poker, the gameplay. I think I could be excellent. I think I would be one of the best players the show's ever seen. Did we already determine that you would last an hour on a desert island? When did we say we never had that discussion? No, no, that was that was Frank and Chris. <laughs> oh, I always, I always get you and Frank and yeah. always. No, so no, I could last on a, I could last on a desert island, and I, my, the gameplay I would bring to that game and the social play would be through the roof. So one day maybe, but that if you could catch up on all Survivor seasons, if you have Paramount Plus, and I got to tell you, people I've talked to who started it, so I started it during the pandemic and then binged every sing single season, essentially. And I know a lot of other people have done that because they put it on Netflix, but well, Netflix only has a couple seasons. If you subscribe to Paramount Plus, or if you win this Paramount Plus subscription from us, you can watch every season and binge it, and you can talk. shout out me. I I I'll talk Survivor with you all day. There's so many good right. gameplay nuances, so try to win this uh, Paramount Plus subscription. All right, give it a shot, and also we'll give one away. If anybody can can guess what I am drinking. Oh. What is Adam drinking? Is that Tang? You'll get it's. You have to guess if you guess. Well, what I, I know what it is. I'm, I I have an educated guess and I have a fun guess. The fun guess was Tang. That's wrong. That's been out of commission don't, for don't years. Give, don't, don't give the educated guess. Why not? Because I want people in the audience to guess it. But my guess is as good as theirs. I, I don't have any inside information. It's not liquid IV. <laughs> it's, it's emergency. It's emergency, isn't it? It's emergency. What the yeah. hell is wrong with you? I told you to let the people guess. I was giving away a subscription. You ruined it. Yes. Well, you got to make the question harder than that. That was a clear cut emer class of emergency right there. You already heard me say my kid was sick. So you had. No, it has nothing to do with that. You're just the type of guy who drinks emergency. You would never have a tang, right? Like you would never have that type of thing. No, I would never have that. I'm you're the type of guy who you're the drinking. type of guy who drinks emergency without a cold, without a sore throat, without any like notable thing, just because maybe someone in the house is sick or like yeah, that's you, what you're you, supposed to you do. You heard it. You heard a sickness was going around the community, so you got to like emergency up in advance. That's the Adam is. That's exactly how you're supposed to use it. All right, let's talk fantasy football. Yeah. So this was, I think. The uh, the most aggressive I've been on the waiver wire oh, all yeah. year by far, and I actually found myself a little bit more fond of Paris Campbell than I than I was uh, when we talked about him on Monday, Monday or yeah, whenever where we talked about that, right? Yeah, yeah, Monday we did it in full PPR. I just I just really like the floor. Yeah, it just makes too much sense. Um, so I I, I think I actually put a, a higher bid on him than I did on Christian Watson. Wow. Yeah, um, I, I mean, I think Christian Watson is, is much more exciting. 
if I had a team that was, uh, let's say, seven and three uh, in good position, I'd, I'd think I'd prioritize. Wa- I would prioritize Watson. If I if I need a win, I think you definitely have the chance of a uh, you know two catch for thirty five yard night for Watson and right. the higher floor with with Campbell. But I really felt like with this group of wide receivers, we actually had some staying power. We actually had a chance to get some player. It's probably not going to happen. I mean, like they're on the waiver wire for a reason. But we we had more of a chance for league winners or significant contributors going forward, more so this week than I can remember in a long time. Yeah, you're right. I think Christian Watson is the most exciting waiver guy we've maybe had this entire season, at least for my money. I can't think of one that I've been more excited to bid on. And now, look, I'm an upside player. I play for upside all the time, and I loved his draft profile. That's the thing. I scouted him. I did his film for CBS Sports, and that was a player I thought was – I had ranked higher than the consensus. And so when that – that will obviously factor in. I'm a believer in the talent. I'm a believer in the talent profile. But at the same time, I just feel like he – yeah, we haven't had this type of potential league winner. And Campbell's also a solid play, too. I like the immediacy of it and the floor of it. I, what I wanted to ask you about with waivers, did you make any big plays for, and now these guys might be rostered already in the leagues you're in. They were in mine, but two guys I think could potentially, or at least have the profile to potentially make a similar impact if they hit their ceiling are Rashad White and Isaiah Pacheco. Did you make any plays yeah. for those two? So White is taken in all my leagues. Jalen yeah. Warren's taken in all my leagues. Yeah. I had one league where Elijah Mitchell was available, and I, I don't think it was a fab bid. I think it was just a waiver claim. Uh, Pacheco, yeah, I have this one weird league. It's a 12-team league, but you're only allowed to roster, I think, at most five running backs and five wide receivers, maybe six. So you do have a pretty good waiver wire. So I had Pacheco, Gus Edwards, uh, a couple players sort of in that vein. Uh, uh, and, and Pacheco was one of the top priorities for me, yeah. I, 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 I mean, I think he's interesting because he's got the Chargers this week, and I, I almost want to take a wait-and-see approach with Pacheco. Um, but the problem is this is his best matchup. So if you pick him up, you're picking him up for this week. But would it shock you if Clyde Edward Vilar was right back in it and they split the carries 50-50 again? It, it would surprise me. At, at least early on, it would surprise me. Now, if Pacheco f- have fumbles and, and makes some big mistakes, mental errors, then that'll ch- change my mind on that quickly. But I will say this when it comes to Pacheco, because I've made some pretty aggressive plays on him in my leagues on waivers. The reason we liked Clyde Edwards Lair earlier this season is because he was scoring touchdowns because he was getting those opportunities. If Pacheco does get those opportunities, and at least last week, Clyde Edwards Lair was on the field for what? A handful of snaps? Like it's nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Those opportunities will be going to Pacheco. And yeah. this is the best offense in football. I don't know about that though. No? You think McKinnon? I think McKinnon. I think Tony. I think uh yeah, no, there's always going to be those receivers. Of but course. I there's think always- McKinnon is just as likely. And okay. in fact, McKinnon. Because so did you make a play for? Would you yeah. make a play for McKinnon then? I, I, I absolutely did. Yeah. yeah. So you have McKinnon over Pacheco on your, no. your packing order. Oh. No, I just McKinnon was available. And Pacheco wasn't. Okay. I'd rather have Pacheco, but you know, Pacheco. Look, it, it's pretty rare that a that a Chiefs running back gets that many carries. You know, you look at Clyde. I think he had he has one game with double digit carries this year. I, yeah. I think. Um. So Pacheco is going to have to really just own the backfield if he's going to get you know 15 carries. I, I just I'm not sure it happens. Um, I'm sorry. I just want to check on that stat. And he, he barely ever catches the ball, right? I mean, very few catches. So McKinnon, if he gets three catches a week, he might outscore Pacheco in PPR. It might just come down to who gets right. the touchdowns. I would prioritize Pacheco. Uh, he's, you know, he, he could be their primary running back, but they're both worth adding. So yes. let's answer some questions here. Um, and uh yeah because that's make sure you smash that like button by the way please just you're watching we have always like five times the amount of people watching that had hit the like button if you are literally watching it will take you one and a half seconds that like button this is a free show we're never going to charge money for this i I shouldn't hold you (laughs) maybe that may not be the case but as of now it's free and we just want one thing for you that's it yeah, we have no plans to try. We're not yeah. going, uh-huh. not going Twitter <laughs> Tesla on you. We're, we're not, not going to go Twitter. Exactly. We're not going to yeah. Elon Musk you right now. So we're just going to keep it free. But we will ask for one thing and just do us the solid. Just hit like. It takes two seconds. And you have no idea the kind of difference it can make for our show. Thomas, the producer behind the scenes, every week he comes to me, by, you know, off pod. He says, Dan, one thing I ask for you, man, just just make my life easier. Get these people hit the like button. I said, Thomas, I don't know how to do it, man. I, I'm trying to figure out ways. So maybe I have to get a little more creative with it. But please, just hit that like button. Subscribe to the show. Share it. Post it on Twitter. But more importantly, just hit the like button. All right. Let's do this thing, Adam. All right. Uh, Giants fan is tired of pits. Oh. 
I'm not dropping pits for any of these guys, just for the record. But who would you pick up rest of the season? Morrow, Hayden Hurst, Jawan Johnson. You know, drop, but you can potentially, I mean, you have to roster two tight ends at this point. I've done in my pits leagues. I have Fryermuth and I, somebody dropped Schultz in one of them at the buy. So I have Schultz and I'm done with pits. I didn't start him last week. I'm, I'm just done with pits until, until Ritter gets in there. If Ritter gets in there at uh, quarterback. And so as far as just picking up a bench guy to play, I would, I would definitely prioritize Hurst out of this bunch. Yeah. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't approach it as rest of season. I'd play it week to week. True. Good point. Stream it. I'm offering Juju and Pollard for Lamb and Elijah Mitchell. What do you think? Give up Juju and Pollard for Lamb and Mitchell. Bang. Capitalize on Pollard's back-to-back great weeks with a lot of volume. Zeke's coming back, and that's going to cloud Pollard and put him back in the bucket we didn't want him in. I mean, we think. It would be cool if the Cowboys didn't do that, but they're not going to. They're going to play Zeke. Jerry Jones made that clear earlier in the season. So I want Lamb. If Juju weren't hurt, would you do this deal? I still would. You know me. I want the best player in the deal. And I think we saw last week, Lamb finally had a smash week. And that could be, that might not be the one week. It might not be an outlier. It might just be, he need more time in the system with Dak Prescott. Dak Prescott is coming back from injury. I think Lamb is a clear cut best player. He's a potential league winner. I don't see league winner from Juju or Pollard. Juju maybe, but the injury scares me. So, I mean, to answer your question, it would be a little different, but I'd still take Lamb. The path for Pollard to be a league winner is, is pretty simple. Yeah, yeah. If Zeke gets re-injured. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, Ravens DST is good. Yes, they are. They're very good. If they're available, pick them up. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm not, a, I don't know that I'm going to answer a lot of start sit questions, but I'll try. <laughs> Rondell Moore, Cortland Sutton, Josh Palmer, Donovan Peoples Jones, Christian Watson. Rondell Moore is the first one for me. Uh, he is me for me too. And it's just crazy. We're at that point in the season, man. Today, Chris Towers did his first edition of the rankings and, where do you think Rondo Moore ranked, Adam, for well, wide receivers he loves this week? Rondo. With all the, Rondo. Well, probably has him eighth. Oh, wow, you're so good at this. You know Chris too well. He had him ninth, and I just I can't. And but I look through it, and I wouldn't have had him ninth, Adam. But I got to be honest with you, man. Between all the buys and the injuries, there aren't too many more wide receivers that I'm like so confident in ranking ahead of Moore. He would still be in my wide receiver two range for the rankings, and it's just crazy. He might not even have. Murray and it just doesn't the vault there's just nothing receiver is in a really bad spot for this week um based yeah. on the injuries and the buys so yeah, of, so but he said he needs more. to so we go more and yeah so what I would do is probably not play Christian Watson and I would wait uh, to see if Keenan Allen and Mike Williams are playing because I would rather have Palmer over Watson and if Judy's playing you might and wanna... if Judy's playing and if Judy's not playing I'm I'm okay with Sutton against the Raiders <sighs> and Donovan Peoples Jones honestly is fine I think you're flipping a coin with these guys. Mm-hmm. I know you love Watson, but it's conceivable that any of those guys is better than him. So yes, I'll probably wait out the injuries to make a, a decision later in the week. I lean more in Sutton though. I think this is the matchup for that Broncos offense. If they're ever going to get going, it's this for, against this Raiders pass. Day. Should have been last week. I know, but you know, I got a lot to say about this Titans defense. They are yeah. good after the quarterback. Uh, I'm doing the notes on that game right now. Over the last four games, they have the third highest pressure rate in the NFL, despite having the third lowest blitz rate. Wow. They do not blitz. They get pressure with four. Last week, they had the third highest pressure rate, despite not having Bud Dupree or uh, Jeffrey Simmons. Yeah, that's crazy. Broncos were very beat up on the line. But I I talked about this going into the game because we saw it play out with the Chiefs. Um, sure, Mahomes put up big numbers. He threw 68 passes, though, and you saw he was running out of time, and they were covering really well, and they were getting pressure with four. That is what they are doing right now. It's very impressive and um, something to keep in mind for Aaron Rodgers. I'm sure nobody will care, but I'm giving you the numbers. They are getting after the quarterback. If they get Dupree back, if they get Simmons back, it's kind of a long shot on a short week. Uh, it could be, could be a tough go for the Packers. All right. Um, would you consider trading Mike Williams and James Conner for Jamar Chase? Ooh, Watson I would, stash. I yeah. Uh, I just need to know this dude's run. T- Tanner. If you can update us with your running back situation, please do because I'm at the point now after seeing the volume and the usage for Connor last week that I'm back on Connor. Like I was off of him because the injury he looked, it's not even that he looked good. It's just, they're back to giving him almost every touch. There's so few backfields where players getting every touch. And since the Kingsbury error, man, they just run so frequently and so f- pretty efficiently for how frequently they run at least in the red zone. And so I think Connor just becomes 
one of the better backs, one of the safer backs on volume alone on a weekly basis. And that's what scares me about this trade. Obviously, you're getting the best player in Chase, but Williams is no slouch once he comes back either. And so if you don't have the running backs to, to, to slot in there, like if you don't have like a Jeff Wilson or something on your bench, I don't know if I would do this. I think this is a great time to sell James Conner. Yeah. I do love his role, but I'm so sick and tired of liking role more than player. And he is just not good. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, he he still doesn't have a longer a run longer than 17 yards. Yeah. He got a ton of work last week against the backup quarterback, you know, for right. the Rams that they that they punished. He averaged 3.3 yards per carry, and his longest run was nine yards. He faced a very good defense, but um, you know, Marquise Brown coming back, Rondo, they're they're gonna be a more of a passing team. Mm-hmm. He's gonna need those touchdowns. So I don't think it's a law. I don't think it's an easy win, but I think this is the type of trade that could benefit both teams. Yeah, because it's not like Connor's useless. He's a number two running back. He's fine, but uh, getting Jamar Chase could be great. Now, there's one other thing. I don't know that. Jamar, I don't know what Jamar Chase is gonna be I like. No. So keep. That I saw a report earlier this week. He's still on crutches. That's not a great report. Like, you don't want to see that at all, as far as the timeline. Uh, as, as far as the timeline looks. So, yeah, I think that's something to consider as well. Like, you might be buying damaged goods. All right. We got to go a little faster here. It's my bad. Uh, sure. I traded Debo for Damian Pierce, and I traded Javon, uh, Jonathan Taylor for Devontae Adams. Hmm. So he went from Debo and Taylor to Adams and Damian Pierce. I mean, he upgraded big at receiver, and he lost big at running back. I don't know if he lost so big at running back, but he lost at running back. Yeah, I, I think overall you won. I'm a winner. Yeah, it's a winner for me because of Adams. Kamara or Stevenson rest of season? I'm a Ramondre guy, but you know me, Adam. I, I'm out on Kamara. I've just never been big on Kamara. But I will say this about Kamara. If Jameis, if the reports are that Jameis Winston might start this week and get the job back, if Jameis Winston is back, I think that actually leads me to dislike Kamara even more because Dalton's target numbers to Kamara were much more, for, uh, were at least more vol- voluminous than uh, Winston's were. So just looking um, at the target... That's a that's just a little a little Is unfair inf- because I think he he missed one game with Winston. I okay. think he left at least one early, and they had Michael Thomas for those games. That's a good point with Thomas in it changes it. Um, but Winston is definitely more of a downfield passer. So yes. I, I mean, I grant you that it might the targets might come down, maybe the carries go up. I just think the offense will be better. I I'd rather have Kamara, but Stevenson has been so damn good. Yeah, I'm Stevenson. That, that it's not a slam dunk. You talked about situation versus talent. Right now, I feel like Stevenson is is running better than Kamara is with the football. He's he's really he's been terrific. Uh, guillotine league, would you drop Fournette or Dak Prescott for Travis Etienne? Great question. Um, so let's see what his quarterback says. He has Lamar, so I would drop Dak for Etienne. All right, I have an offer to get Olave for Dak Prescott and Michael Carter. I have Kyler and decent running back depth. What's his? Oh, he's Kyler. It seems to me sustain his death. Like this is the type of league where there is nothing on the wire at quarterback. Cause I've seen those kind of leagues where people are just ramp ripping backup quarterbacks throughout their rosters, a deep roster, a ton of bench spots. If that's the case, I would not do this because Kyler could miss another week. It's a hamstring injury. Soft tissue injuries are tricky. Who knows what that could turn into if he comes back too early from it, re-injures himself. I just, unless there's a quarterback that you can trust after trading Dak that you can pick up for free, I would not do that. Should I trade Joe Mixon for Tyreek Hill? I have ETN, Gus, and Foreman. Oh, and you hit like. Thank you. Yeah. First of all, thank you for hitting like. Everyone, please hit the like button. If you're watching right now, just one click, like. Well, we have you. 99. Is that decent? And we should be well over 100 at this point. We should be, but we, when we get to 100, we're giving away a subscription. Okay. So one more like, and we give a subscription. As far as the oh, trade 103. goes. Hallelujah. <laughs> All right, okay. comment with your Twitter handle, everybody. And Thomas Schaefer is going to hook one of you up for a uh, Paramount Plus monthly, uh, free month of nice. Paramount Plus. And by the way, 1883 is running away with this. Which show are you most interested in? And I watched the first 20 minutes of, of the first episode of 1883, mm-hmm. and I was glued. I'm so upset that I haven't been able to get into it. It is on the top of my list once football season is over. What is Adam Azer watching these days? Anything? No, I'm so busy, unfortunately, at night. I'm so busy. Yeah, and kids. when I have time, I'm trying to watch City on a Hill. City on a Hill. I've never even heard of that one. Terrific. Yeah. What streaming service? Showtime. Okay. Yeah. I don't even think I don't know. I don't know. How do you even get Showtime these days? Which is that another a la carte streaming service? I don't even know. It's, yeah, you just get Showtime anytime. Oh, okay. Yeah. 
Dan, we Team get that for free. Yeah, that's right. We, uh, yeah. <laughs> Hook me up. How do we I get any I, boys? You gotta I'd check like, out your, your bennies, bro. Where yeah, where <laughs> do I access this, dude? I have no FFP hey, shirts. Hey, by I the way, nothing. you have health insurance. I hope you haven't just been paying out of pocket. <laughs> no, I haven't. Insurance. I haven't know about the health insurance. <laughs> I would. Uh, I think it's fine to trade Mixon for Tyreek Hill. I would rather have Hill. He's yes, he's the I number think this one is wide receiver. Definite yes for me. Yeah, I it's would. not even close. I would take Hill in a heart. Do it so quick that you. The, <laughs> I can't. Rec- I mean, the only Mixon fan on the show is Adam. Yeah, I hate. I really hate five touchdown running back Sanders. <laughs> <and> <laughs> the one five touchdown game. Which side would you have time to trade him? Oh, Sanders and Waddle or Aaron Jones, Jones and Amon Ra. I'm on the Jones and Amon Ra. I am the biggest Amon Ra Sun God fan of this show. Me and Jacob Gibbs lead the way there. Thank you, Daniel, for hitting like. Thank Trade you, Daniel. Fields and Pickens for T. Higgins. I have Lamar Jackson. I would rather trade. I'd almost rather trade Lamar and see what you can get there because I think it's a bigger name to float. Um, but this is essentially for me Fields for Higgins, and I'm fine with that too. If you can't trade Lamar for a better receiver, or or would you, Adam? Actually, I got an interesting question. I don't want to answer that question. No. It's too hard. It's I, hard. I, I guess I'd rather have. I don't Lamar know. Jackson. I think I'd rather have Fields rest of season. Rashad I'm Bateman just, out for the year. Oh, who cares? Dis- oh, I care. That's a disgusting receiver core. Is it worse than Baltimore than Chicago's? No, but he runs more. There's more designed runs in that offense for Fields somehow than Lamar Jackson. I am not sure. I think they're pretty even. Obviously, what we're seeing now from Fields is amazing. And Fields' defense is so bad that they always have to put their foot on the pedal on offense. That's the yeah. difference. The Ravens have a lot of these like grindy 1913 wins because they don't because they have a solid defense. They're okay defense. But yeah, you know, I, I, I would float, I would try to get a little bit better than T. Higgins, like a CD Lamb. But if Higgins is all you can get, I think you got to do what you got to do. Like, you can't just say, well, I'm losing the trade in value. So I'm not going to make it. If you need that wide receiver, then you need that wide receiver and you, you got to go for yeah. it. So I think it's okay. I agree. Um, I'm five and five. I have a need of both wide receiver and tight end. Who's the priority commit or Watson? Ooh, that's a good one with, with needs. I would still, pri- I would prioritize Watson. I would like to prioritize Watson. However, if Watson Campbell, people's Jones, Tony, hmm. uh, maybe even Slayton uh, MVS, if, all of those guys or five or four of those guys are available, then maybe you could prioritize commit. Okay. And think I'll have a fallback plan. But if only those two guys are available, I'd, I'd go Watson. I um, I've got Walker, ETN, and Jeff Wilson all on buys. Nervous about playing three Lions. Whoa. Should I try to pick up Brian Robinson, Chuba Hubbard, or Kenyon Drake? But, yeah, I like Robinson this week uh, against the Texans. I don't love him, Great but I'd, start him, I'd probably start him over Swift. I would start Robinson over Swift. I would even consider starting Drake over Swift if Gus Edwards is not back and that injury lingers. I think if you have to make that decision, I think Drake, I think uh, Gus is going to be back. Okay. So I'm not, I think that was the word that he should be back. This is a good conversation. I think you'll be interested in. I said, you go to a restaurant, what okay. they, there, there's no tables. What's the longest you'll wait for a table? Oh, that's such a, I love these kinds of questions. Um, <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, yeah, you know me too well already to know I'd love this type of question. So th- there's a couple factors I want to ask you first. So you're at a, they're, they're giving you a wait time. Did you guys make a plan like this is the restaurant? We really want to go. It's supposed to be great. Like, is it only one thing or you're like, eh, let's go somewhere tonight. You look on your phone. You look on Yelp. You're like, oh, this like new Korean barbecue place looks good. Let's try this. Or is it a- be that I, I, because it's obviously second. a different answer if you're if you go going to Joe's Stone Crab and you expect an hour, three hour wait or whatever. Yeah, you, you know, you might have a wait. Exactly. So musical, let's go out to dinner. Kind okay. of you go to Chili's and okay. there's a long line. Okay. So for me, it's always, the number is always like 25. That's my breaking point. Uh, I was 20. Yeah. I won't wait to 35, 45. That's, that's too long for me for unless the, unless, you know, like, cause there's other places, like, unless this is the only place and we were counting on it, but other than that, nah, 15 yeah. to 20. Now, of course there's the strategic, you go, you put your name down, you go do something else. You yeah. know there's going to be a wait. You go do something else. You know, hopefully the the buzzer that they give you. Yeah, yeah, trade. reaches wherever you go. <laughs> uh, would you drop any of these guys for Garrett Wilson, Thielen, Boyd, or Judy? I oh, love yeah. Wilson rest of the season, so I would definitely drop one of these guys. I would drop them all for Wilson, but I like dropping Thielen the most of this crew. 
Yeah, me too. I don't like this comment. I don't. I know you're not giving anything away. <laughs> I don't like the comment. It is very spoiler ass. I, I hate when people do that. You know, my yeah. brother does that. And, and <laughs> like, hey, listen, I don't. I don't want to know how you felt about the episode. I don't want to know anything. I want nothing. Did you um, check out the patient yet, Adam? No, nah, I. I don't know. You don't have time for anything, right? I'm just. I'm. Yeah. I'm, I'm a zombie right now. Okay. Um. Let's see. What is the range of player I should trade Fournette for? I need a running back bad. I have Fournette, Wilson, and Walker on a bye. Well, you better hope whoever you're trying to trade Fournette to isn't looking at these injury reports because I think there's a chance Fournette doesn't suit up the next game, after, even after the bye. We'll see what happens there, but I think that might linger. So as long as you can kind of squeak it through without anyone questioning why you're trying to trade Fournette, considering he's injured, the range you can probably look for, that's a good question because a healthy Fournette, if you're selling him as one. The first the first name that came to mind was James Conner. James Conner. Okay. Now, well, the way that they're one's injured and one's coming off his best game of the season, it might be hard. Yeah. But I but, I would I you know who I would look for long term. Well, this depends. You have if you have a good record, I would do it for Swift. I just don't know how to value Swift. I don't know if he's ever get coming back. If he comes, know, if but, he comes back to full strength, then he's great. Yeah, he could be uh, a league winner for him this week, you know. How about David no, Montgomery? I mean, oh, he needs someone this week. Montgomery's a great call with Herbert on IR. I'm not now. sure you're going to get. And people might think David Montgomery's about to win them their league. I got to do a little digging on this. Um, you know, see how I feel about him. He's another guy. He's just, he's just not, just not. A, <laughs> you know, I'm he's not going to get into it. But can he? Does he? He's have in your Connor eye test range. He's in your Connor eye test. Uh, but he has been his whole career. It, it's, I know. It's Agreed. Career. And even when he's getting 15 carries a week, four straight games with 15 carries or 14 carries, nine points, 12.2, 8.5, yeah. 5.4. Actually scored a touchdown in one of those games. Will <laughs> Herbert doesn't work in the passing game, so Montgomery's not going to pick up any of that. True. Um, are they going to give him 20 carries? If they do, then okay, that'd be great. No, but they'll never have the game script to do it. They're always giving up points on defense, so no. Well, the two of them combine for 20, you know? So Yes, but like... This they, was they, that was like a perfect game script against the Lions. They were in the game the whole time, and they still well, how many carries? Nine finish? carries for thirty-seven. Yeah, that's just not great. Yeah, not great, Bob. Um. All right, so I'd still think I'd I'd trade for net for him, especially if you need someone this week. Yeah, the desperation kicks in. So sure. So I trade Lamar Jackson for Tua. He already has oh. Otto and Hill. You know, I hate to say it, I think I would. Is it crazy, Adam, to say that? No, it's not. Uh, Do you I, know that Tua that, has not only... That, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. This is an interesting stat. Tua has not only attempted the most 15-yard passes on the field, he's been the most efficient 15-plus yard passer down the field. That leads to fantasy points. Oh, yeah. I'm, but the the only concern I have is his last three games have been Detroit, Chicago, and Cleveland. Yeah, true. Really has, bad defenses across the board. His next five games, four of them are against teams that are top seven against quarterbacks. Mm -hmm. One of them is Houston. One of them is Houston. And they're so bad against running backs. And they have some good pieces in the secondary, but they're probably not a tough matchup. Then you have San Francisco. I don't know. I, you know, without most of they're kind of hit or miss. But um, the Chargers are 14th. The Bills are third. The Packers are sixth. Yeah. None of those teams are fully healthy. So I don't know how much to make of it, but Tua has beat up on some really easy opponents. True. Uh, I, you know, I almost feel dumb every time I I criticize, not criticize, but every time I express any disappointment in Lamar Jackson. Why? I don't know, because, you know, he is Lamar Jackson and he's so involved and he runs so much, but where are the fantasy points, man? That's what I'm saying. It's like the first of all, he when he was his MVP fantasy season, when he had his MVP year and he was the MVP of fantasy, there was more rushing volume in that year. He looked to run a lot more than he does now, especially on the dropbacks, which they consider scrambles. They chart those as scrambles that when you actually run off of your drop back. And that's just not happening at the same level it used to with him. And for me, my biggest gripe with Lamar is I hate his receiver core. I don't see guys who can make plays for him down the field and turn these explosive plays in that he's going to need to be such a consistent scorer like he was early in the season. Bateman made a lot of those plays before the injury, right? And like even Duvernay yeah. was used in that role a little bit earlier yeah. in the season. And now he's not. And so 
I just hate the receiver core. That's one of my biggest things. Then again, like he has an Andrews, and Andrews will help his 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 game for sure. He's had well. Andrews for most. Of, well, I guess each of the I mean, last recently, game. recently, because yeah, it's yeah. been ugly recently. So Lamar Jackson is on pace for twelve hundred rushing yards. So that's nothing <laughs> to sneeze at. But uh, but he has had a lot of those big long ones earlier in the year. Um. Yeah. You know. Look, eighty-two yards last week. Fifty-eight or more yards in all but two games. Okay, that doesn't really concern me. It's it's touchdowns for him. He he doesn't have a ton of multi touchdown games, but I don't know. I, I I think the days maybe of the Ravens being a juggernaut offense and scoring a bunch of points those might be in the past. They might just be a good offense. Right. Whereas the Dolphins have scored thirty or more points, I think, in three straight games. Now that exactly. okay, it's silly because like they've scored twenty seven points two straight games, the Ravens, but for the year. They look like a good, not great offense. Yeah, that's how I feel too. All right, forget it, man. Like I'm going two over. <laughs> Jackson. Do I want all three Dolphins? I, I, it's risky, but it's not so bad. Um, would you sell high on Josh Jacobs? That's a good question. From our boy Robert Thomas. Uh, it is our boy. Would I sell high on Jacobs? Nah. No. No. Oh, a serious question alert. Did I trade Barkley for Jamal Williams, DeAndre Swift, and Justin Fields? He has no. Brady. And no, I wouldn't do that either. Just because you have Brady. If you didn't have Brady, I would, might consider this because Fields. But no, I mean, you don't want Williams and Swift. Like, what are you going to do with that? You want Barkley. Yeah. Uh, who are some good running backs to target with an easy playoff schedule? I would have to have done the research before this. Unfortunately, I, I don't have That's that. That's usually on. something I do this week, actually. Yeah, we'll get that to you. I should do. I'll have that for next Tuesday for sure. I'll do the spreadsheet. Well, the trade deadlines, I know Thanksgiving is uh, okay. Is a big trade deadline time. So uh, I'll try to I'll try to do that tomorrow morning and have it. I think for we're doing show. a Twitter spaces tomorrow, FFT, for those of you who follow us on Twitter. So I'll have it for that if Adam does the work tomorrow. This is on Adam mostly. I see Houston is playing. And Adam owes me, by the way, because the last time he sent, the last three times he sent me articles that should go on the site, he sent it in some of the, it was the mo- like he just sent like a block of text through email without any <laughs> kind of direct. It's just like, so let's let us let us put this one on him. The uh, Derek Derek Henry has the Chargers and the Texans in weeks fifteen and sixteen. Dallas in week seventeen. Um, so we'll do this later, Adam. We don't need to do this live in the moment. But I'm so into it right now. <laughs> All right, Derek Henry's obviously a buy high, but yeah, he's got to have for that playoff schedule. Somebody says Kamara has a great playoff schedule. Let's Ooh. let's see if that's true. Kamara has Atlanta, Cleveland, and Philadelphia. Yeah, I don't know about Philadelphia. They'll have Jordan Davis back by then, but it's a good, it's a good schedule. Um, all right. I traded Ramondre Stevenson and Rondell Moore for Tua. Oh, Devontae. Devontae Adams, I'm guessing. Oh, for Tay Adams. Um, is that... Is should that I have one? Yeah, Devontae Adams, it has to be. He's asking if you should have went for a Monra instead of Devontae. Oh. I think I, I have Devontae over him. Yeah, we uh, love him on the same Brown, but not as much as Devontae no. Adams. Agreed. Is the Eagles defense still worth holding through the playoffs? Yes. Yeah, bad game for them. They, you know, they were on the field for about 40 minutes. The Washington ran, they might have ran 80 plays last night. It was it was wild. How about that game? I was I was rooting for the for the Eagles, by the way. Were you? Yeah, because like the Giants aren't winning the division. What we need is the other wild card contenders to lose games. And now the Washington is clearly a wild card contender. Are they in the playoffs if it started today? I don't th- think so. I think it's Giants, Cowboys, and there's no, one more seed. They're not. I, I think they might be the eighth seed, though. I mean, the the uh yeah, they're eighth. They're the first team out. So every NFC East. <laughs> Is in every AFC East team is in the playoffs if they started today, and three of the four NFC East teams are in the playoffs, and Washington is the first team out. Yeah. And wow. by the way, you're bearing the lead here. Like hours before that game even happened, Adam was like, 
I just I t- on the Monday show, he's like, I, I just can't see any way the Eagles don't end the season yeah, undefeated. And he's that. doing like, yes, that's what you said. And he didn't like the schedule thing. He's like, first you got this game, and you got that game. Win, win. You were saying win, 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 win. You agreed with me. And you I did agree with you. Me. And yes. I did agree with you. But <laughs> the point is not that we were wrong. I don't give a crap about that. It was an, an epic reverse jinx by you on the team. I yeah. hate more than any team in my life. I don't hate anything more than Eagles and their fans. So I was really happy with that reverse jinx. As far as the question goes, keep the Eagles defense with the playoffs. They're going to be a better defense once Jordan Davis comes back. Trying to trade AJ Brown for a back AJ Brown for Damian Pierce, ETN or Jonathan Taylor in PPR. Uh, what do you think? AJ Brown for Damian Pierce, ETN or Jonathan Taylor. I mean, like here's my thing with trading AJ Brown right now. What's the offense going to look like with Dallas Goddard injured? Are some of those targets going to funnel now to AJ Brown? It seems like the answer would be yes. They don't really have a tight end behind him on the roster to replace him for those targets. Brown makes the most sense. So I don't really think this is a great time to trade A.J. Brown. Is there anyone else you could trade to try to get one of these backs? It's a good point. It's a good point. But I, I still think, you know, Pierce to me is a little bit lower than ETN and Taylor. Okay. Um, ETN would be my favorite. Uh, just a little worried about Taylor re-injuring the, the ankle. Yes. Um, also not playing the Raiders, but <laughs> yeah. you know, in full PPR, he should catch a ton of passes from Matt Ryan. I, I would try, I think, I think Brown for ETN or Taylor is pretty fair, yeah, um, but you're right about the Goddard it. entry. It's, it's a great, it's a great question. It's so, sad. it's so sad. We lost Goddard, man. Like the tight ends this year. It's just, we can't afford that. The, the position is right. still is as ugly as it's been. We just can't afford it. Losing a guy like Goddard. What are we going to do now? Is there a single player in fantasy football you'd rather have over than over Travis Kelsey? That see, that's been my case. Like I've drafted Kelsey in so many leagues, and I called him the cheat code in this offseason. Everyone didn't agree. Like when I took him in the first rounds of our mocks, Adam, people were laughing at me. They thought it was ridiculous. Probably wasn't. It was probably something you were wearing. <laughs> this is a nice <laughs> Under Armour sweatshirt. It Adam's is- giving me crap for this really nice Under Armour hoodie, and I just don't get why. What is he even wearing? What do you have on over there? Like a a collared shirt. It's uh, it's a sweater. Is that from Abercrombie and Fitch? From Express. Um, it's a. Is sweater. that from Hollister? It's does a, you have a Hollister shirt on? It's actually very nice. What color is is this? Uh, that looks like a. Well, you have to let me first start by saying I'm red green colorblind. I'm, yeah, me too. I I thought that I thought this was a different color than what it actually is. It looks green to me. It is green. I always thought it was okay. brown. Somebody told me it was green. It blew my mind. <laughs> I, I mean, right now it looks like maybe I'm not colorblind. Maybe my old age, I reverted to being not colorblind. But for me, it's always my issue isn't seeing the colors. It's always if you mix red and green together, I can't tell the difference. So like oh. poker chips, when I play poker and they have the 25s yeah, are green and the reds, weird. I always screw that up. And then like, I make wrong decisions. It's basically. embarrassing. Um, her rest of season. I think he's OK. As long as Chase yeah. is out, I think as soon as right. Chase is back, he's not OK. Uh, for payment. Loss Ertz. Who should I prioritize? Morrow, Hertz, or Dulcich? Ooh. Oh, look at that. Um, He's heads. I'm still leaning toward Dulcich. Uh, fine. One bad week doesn't put me off his scent. Would you trade Madison to the Dalvin Cook manager for Garrett Wilson? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, Jacob. Yeah, obviously you have to know what you know what the potential you're giving up, but I love Garrett Wilson rest of the season. I think he could be a nice. I think he could be a really co- uh, consistent receiver rest of the year. Should I trade Schultz to the Goddard owner? I have Komet. <sighs> I'd keep Schultz. Yeah, I'd trade Komet to the Goddard owner. Yes, exactly. Would you start? Oh, that's not funny, oh. idiots! Get the hell out of here! Like, are you kidding me? <laughs> and I'm sorry for even clicking on it. Um, would you play McCaffrey and Elijah Mitchell or trade one? Trade Mitchell. No, you know what? I wouldn't trade Mitchell. You're not going to get Don't anything from him. Care. I just keep him on my bench as a legit handcuff for, for Christian McCaffrey. And maybe in a great matchup, you can play both. Look at this nice guy. Oh, David A. No way, David A. No way are you saying something nice to me, David A. Something is up with David A over there. Something weird's going on behind the scenes. I think Azer may even be in on it because I've never seen David A be this nice to me on a stream. No, it's I have nothing to do with it. Uh, should I target Deshaun Watson or Christian Watson? I have Tom Brady. Deshaun I'd or Christian? Deshaun. Oh, you'd say Deshaun. I'd say Christian. Hey, Christian Watson could be a league winner. I don't think so, but, you know. 
I don't know if you're going to start Watson over Brady at any point. Have you seen Tom Brady in fantasy? I don't even know if he's a top 15 I mean, quarterback. He's been pretty solid the last couple of weeks, though. No, he hasn't. What, what did he's he have last week? Two, 249 and two TDs? And an interception. Oh, and an interception. Okay, but... He scored 17 points last week and 20 points this week. Yeah, now Julio's healthy. Godwin's healthier. Maybe. Thoughts? Thoughts? I'm... I'm I just don't know what we can expect from Deshaun Watson right now. That's my whole thing. Like yeah. he hasn't played football in two years. For what it's worth, just in case anyone's gonna, you know, tell me I'm a horrible person for recommending Deshaun Watson, he will not be on any of my fantasy teams. I don't oh. care if I have to start if I have to start Davis Mills in the championship yes. and Deshaun Watson is available, I will not start Deshaun wow. Watson. Wow. He's taking but, a moral stand right here on FFT. I've done it before. Live stream. Oh, who have you done this moral stand with before? The first guy was uh Adrian Peterson. What? So you never rostered him after the the kid thing? I don't want to talk too no. much about this stuff, but you never rostered him from that point. That was like Maybe I five, did he once. had like five more years of his career after. I that. know. I may have once because I forgot when he was on Arizona or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, he he is a sickening thing. I mean, the fact that he was so indignant and 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 was mad at the Vikings for the way they treated him, it was uh, disgusting in every way. Moral and, stands. I, I yeah, love it. I didn't know I this did with Tyree Hill. Um, but now you'll roster Hill from now. That point yeah, on. that's the thing. It's crazy because now I'll roster. <laughs> so you can't. Just, what do you mean then? This is like the I worst one. I'm losing fantasy because of my rules. <laughs> like I'm a fantasy analyst, but I'm not <laughs> rostering the show. It'll take like a immediate for a moral stand in the immediacy, but like it wears off, I guess, for you. You're like, it's, uh, yeah. it's, it's been, been three years. He, me, he regrets it. It's been three <laughs> years. <laughs> it's in a very Jim Peterson, but. Um, who else? <laughs> I, I'm actually, I, I'm more disgusted, not more disgusted. Okay. I'm also disgusted with the Browns for the way they structured that contract. Oh, it's so stupid. It just, yeah. I, and you this, and every NFL owner is, is disgusted with the Browns. This is what I'm ultimately going for. I am, <laughs> I am leaning toward a 20, let's see, it's 2024, 20, 2032 oh presidential wow. So I have ambitions, and uh, my anti Deshaun Watson stance will be a big part of it. I think. I think um, you'd be a pretty good politician, Adam. I'd be a great politician. Yeah, I really do. Then, <laughs> thank you. It's a horrible profession. I hope you never seek it, but I think you'd be good at it if you wanted to. I, but I wouldn't know, wish that on my worst enemy. I think ball going into politics is a dangerous game, and most of the time it just leads to you getting your life dragged through the mud for. For what? Yeah, but I really don't have a lot of skeletons. I really. <laughs> you like, say I, that. I but... thought about it, but I don't even. Dr I've never drank. I know you did I, that. You I, never... I have a very clean past. He's so, so, so squeaky clean. We went to a tailgate. I offer Adam a beer. Nope, I don't drink. That's right. That's right. I mean, you know, so very responsible guy. How are you gonna? How are you gonna ever try like Heath coming? Uh, Mar Heath's like seventeen thousand beer recommendations. If you can't even drink. No, I went with him to a brewery. Okay. I, took, I took sips. Okay. And yeah, I, and Durant is right. Oh, Durant says all of Adam's skeletons are on the show. <laughs> <laughs> and what I said last night on Twitter probably disqualifies me, but I said that I thought you that say? the officials made the right call on Brandon Graham. What the hell? That was a <laughs> gross. It was the right call. He took four steps. It was too late. No, it was too no. late. That was no, a total was flop. That was a total flop. It doesn't matter. It was a flop. It was a penalty. He he was too late. Just we don't need those penalties deciding games. I if it was and they if, were owed they were owed they were owed like they got one give back call. I think it was an offensive pass. Yeah, they yeah. were owed multiple give back calls after the play because the Goddard face mask they didn't call because that changed the entire game. It doesn't mean it wasn't a penalty. It was a penalty. Mm -hmm. I got offered Mark Andrews for Ramondre Stevenson. Should I take that deal? I would definitely take that deal. I love Andrews or Kelsey if I can get him. Should I trade Olave for Amari Cooper? I have Deshaun mm -hmm. Watson looking to stat. Yeah, I would do that. I would definitely do that. Though, again, somehow, some way, every single week, these home road splits with Cooper are yeah. just like, you're getting absurd at this point. Last week, I lost some. You know, you know what had happened? Him in what? Xavier Howard, almost every yeah. snap he was on Amari Cooper. Yep. And, and look, Cooper was getting open because um, Cooper can get open against anyone. But I just don't think that Brissett was looking his way. Right. And then you see nine targets for Donovan Peoples-Jones. Just keep in mind, Xavier and Howard, those were the two shadows I saw. And I didn't see that one until this morning. Howard and uh, and Diggs on Lazard. Howard's, Howard's awesome. Yeah, no, he's not having a great year, but he 
He was great yeah, against Tommy Johnson, uh, you know, weeks ago when they shadowed him, and he was great against Cooper. Um, all right. Trading an IR guy for Justin Herbert. We'll still have Brady and Cousins on my roster. Mike Williams is on my bench. Would you trade or drop Brady or Cousins or neither? Hmm. He's trading an IR guy for Herbert, so he definitely shouldn't roster three quarterbacks. I would drop... <sighs> I'd drop Brady. Yeah. Okay. Fine. I agree. You know, I, like, I like something about Cousins here. What's I, that? I brought this up on the show. I'm just going to double check. Okay. Going into the bye, he had one of the lowest air yards per pass attempts. Uh, per pass attempt. And the last two weeks, it's been his two highest of the year. So wow. he has. Uh, That's his, a good sign. His most air yards by far the last two games of the season. Uh, so I mean, he's he is getting guy. to a point where he's just like, I do not care what the coverage looks like. I'm going to throw the ball in Justin Jefferson's direction and see what happens. Like, not just I'm not talking about that fourth and 18 crazy catch. The the throw after that was like right by the goal line. I think it was like out at the two or three. He literally threw that into bracket coverage. There was a defender. There was like a defender sandwich between Jefferson. And he just said, I don't care. Threw it up there. And Jefferson, it, the result of the play was a catch. It's like yeah. at this when you have that kind of confidence in a receiver, it could help you a lot from a fantasy standpoint as a quarterback. Yeah, his throw to the other team though was pretty incredible. I have yeah, it. Was, it, it looked like he like missed the. You think he thought it was his own team and just got confused by the color? Yeah, combinations. I think so I really yeah, think right? those were too similar. <laughs> They're very similar. I think that actually happened. <laughs> Not kidding. Uh, I haven't heard much about Tyler Higby. Is he back? Back in the sense of a no ceiling, but potentially high floor type tight end at a position that doesn't score points. Sure. I mean, like that offense is such a disaster right now. He could probably funnel in five for 63 type games on a somewhat consistent basis. So I think he's back. I think he's back to uh, running routes. I think they have a choice. He wasn't really running routes. Uh, uh, He did last week. He had half his catches after the cup injury, which was in the fourth quarter. So I do think he's a must have tight end now that that cup is on IR. Um, I'll, I'll just double check the routes. Uh, sorry, give me two seconds. We have a, this true media is an incredible database. It's the best. Oh the my things god! Things that I can look up now that I never even knew existed before. I would want you to teach me how to look. I'm what I use true media for mostly right now is to watch all the game film because they have all the all twenty two oh. coaches film on there of literally at, not only every game and every player you can sort by players and just like if you want to you could just watch a wide receiver every snap he had, which is so good for people like me who love the film, but I don't really have a good, I haven't done a good job of navigating the stats like you're doing right now. Um, oh yeah. I'll teach you. It's actually, yeah, I would like you to, if you don't mind one day, he ran 26 routes on 48 snaps, which isn't great, but then I could also, I can also break it down by quarter. I will look in the fourth quarter, how many routes and snaps he ran and he ran 11 routes on 16 snaps. So you know, so that was what twenty six routes for the whole game and eleven of them the fourth quarter. I have a feeling it was score related, but also probably cup related. So yes, Higby is the guy to get. Um, uh, Adam and Dave, <laughs> did you used to watch Duckman? I did watch Duckman. I totally forgot about that. What the hell is that? And I'm not yeah. Dave. I don't. Well, Dave likes the critic. Okay, uh, okay, I don't okay. remember it that well. Duckman, great. Great call. Was that pre Seinfeld? Probably going Jason on. Jason Alexander. Same time, I would guess. Oh. Would you trade Fields for Amandre St. Brown or Ramondre Stevenson? Oh, did we already do this one? Uh, no, no, but it's very we similar. Did something similar. Yeah, I would do it for Amon Ra. But again, I would just. I, would, I think I would prefer Fields over Lamar. So. Yeah, yeah. But as far as Amon Ra versus Stevenson, it's a definite Amon Ra for me in full point PPR. Am I an idiot for not trading Mark Andrews for CeeDee Lamb and Damian Pierce? I th- don't think anyone's an idiot uh, who for not doing something in fantasy. Uh, there are plenty of things that you can be called an idiot for in life. The fantasy is not one of them. But unless you, unless you collude in your league, then you're an idiot. But I, I hate colluders. But I don't like this decision by you. That's my answer. I would rather Lamb and Pierce over – that's Damian Pierce. I'd rather Lamb and Pierce over Mark Andrews for sure. Yeah. Yeah, you're an idiot. No, I just you're not. <laughs> Gabe Davis, Cortland Sutton. Uh, I'm going Gabe Davis. Gabe. Um, full PPR though. That's still Gabe. Foreman Sutton, Foreman and oh yes, yeah. Do that trade right now. Foreman's value could tank at any moment. Why do you think that? 
because when Hubbard's back, remember when that first game yeah. happened. Yeah, but when he's like fully back and they feel like he's hundred percent ready to. You I think just, so? I, I feel like I feel like Foreman's got that job. I feel yeah. Like, I think so. Maybe, but also the flip side of that is they're not going to have too many game scripts like that Falcons game. This is they're going to start to get blown out starting with this week. They're multi what are they twelve point underdogs, and then it's like, what is Foreman doing? Uh, what do you think about Lazard versus Watson this week? Hmm. I think I'd play Watson. I would not F play it. Watson. I would play F it. What are you talking about? I would play Lazard. You mean what I'm talking about? I want ceiling at him. Would, he, would, it, would, it, would it be a what am I talking about decision this past week when Watson won people leagues and, and weeks and Lazard had three for 55? Nobody's shadowing Alan Lazard this week. He will be the best receiver for them. And he has a ceiling. Fairly what high ceiling? What ceiling? He's got an 18 point ceiling. Has that guy ever had a ceiling game in his career? Yeah, he had a two touchdown game, I think, last year. Yeah, it was probably like five catches for 36. I remember yards, it was, I think it was on a Saturday. Yeah. I was, oh, we're going to get Saturday football soon. Yeah. I'm excited. Finally, you and I get to enjoy Saturday football. Yeah. <laughs> Our pathetic teams. Oh, my God. Wisconsin, don't even get you started there. Aaron Jones or Damian Pierce, PPR. Oh, I finished my emergency. God. This was one of the hard. I oh what emergency tastes good. What are you talking? Emergency about? Emergency tastes good. Not not the one I'm drinking. The orange, the the classic orange. It tastes fine. It's disgusting. Is it? I don't think that's a bad take. Someone weigh in in the chat. I don't think emergency tastes <laughs> disgusting. Like, it's pretty easy to get through an emergency. All right. I take, uh, I take Aaron Jones. Um, yeah, Aaron Jones. You know they have these chewable emergency tablets, okay. but for, for some reason I feel like they're not as as. As and beneficial what? as the as the power. Like I feel like I'm getting so much more in the power. <laughs> why? Power. I don't know. <laughs> it's like a mental block for you. You need to and drink. There, it. I, there's just so much more. Like think about it. I'm drinking <laughs> a, a tall glass of water compared to chewing one tablet. How could it possibly be the same? I just lost <laughs> Dallas Goddard. Would you use it to pick up Cole Komet on the num number one waiver wire? And yeah, you can definitely cut Kyron Williams. Oh yeah. And I think you can. I think you can use it on Komet. Unless sure. you can use it on a, you know, uh, one of those wide receivers that we really like, and then make a trade for a tight end or something. But yeah, I think you should use it on Komet. Uh, you know, let me just see one thing here. What's that? Backup tight end for Philly. Uh, it's nobody. Old. Yeah, no, nobody you want to pick no. up. No. Maybe in the uh, tight end premium league. Maybe. Would you rather have T. Higgins or AJ Brown? Brown. Yeah. Because of the Goddard injury. Yeah. Should I trade Michael Pittman for Chris Olave? <sighs> yes, I would. Especially, man, if Jameis comes back into the starting lineup, that is great news for Olave. The air yards he had in one of those Jameis games was like league, league setting. Like, I think it was like the third most ever. So, yes, I would do it. Uh, you guys like to say revenge game when analyzing games. And out of 100%, what percent do you assign to revenge game? Uh yeah, it's probably there's so many, so few of them are actually revenge games where a player is mad. Depends on the narrative, right? There are right. some true revenge games. I don't know. Yeah, very <laughs> case by case basis. For me. We don't even say it once a week, so it's less than ten <laughs> percent. It's probably less than five percent. Case by case basis. Are there any revenge games this week? Oh, good question. We have the Watson Houston coming up next week, but that's or that's two weeks from now. Yeah. I'm, I'm kind of on this guy's side though, like. Just because you played on another team doesn't mean it's a revenge game. I know. No, that's it's, true. It's more so like if the team didn't want you and casted you off, then it's a revenge. Right. But if the contract yeah. just ended and then you went somewhere else. I got it. Cordaro Patterson against the Bears. Revenge <laughs> game. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Uh, would you trade Foreman and Pitts for Andrews? Yes. And I would. Log off right now, Kyle, and press accept. Adam is a great host, but he has the worst thing. <laughs> if you replace the word host with president in 12 oh. years, well, then I'd be totally fine with that. Adam he's got my good, vote. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. And I don't think he has, though. I think his takes are overrated as far as how bad they are. So yeah. here's my thought. Like, first of all, I think Adam has good football takes. I'll start by saying that. Now, yeah. when you talk about entertainment and food and things of that nature, he struggles. His takes aren't good. They're certainly not good. But the <laughs> worst is like, that's that's too that's going too far, I think. 
What was your I, favorite? I, what was your favorite cereal again? Honeycombs or oh, Golden Grams, Golden Gold, Grams, Golden Grams. Oh my God, this guy's the worst at food things. <laughs> oh, no, so he good. said ham was the best deli meat. Ham, ham. I'm not like I guess I'm not so fancy. I don't go to the deli counter and go ham. Oh, give me a half a pound of prosciutto. As yeah. the boots, you know. At the very I mean, least, pastrami. You're Jewish, and you don't even like pastrami. I do like Come pastrami. On. I like pastrami. I'm, try- I'm not trying not to die with every sandwich I eat. That stuff is so There's fattening. There's no way that stuff's worse for you than ham. Ham it is, is just no, as fattening, fat, and just fattening. as ham is also like grosser bad meat quality meat. There's no way a good pas- cut of pastrami is yes. definitely better for back, you than back ham. To back, back to back comments. Golden grams are fire. Golden grams are fire. No, yeah. they're not. They're like every cereal's fire. Like anything tastes good when it, from a cereal standpoint. But like this is like you being like, you know what? I, I really like Raisin Bran. Raisin Bran. Like Bran. Of course you do. <laughs> Why is Dan always challenging your personal takes on life? I would <laughs> never that Golden Grams take answer my question. <laughs> I also last night. Well played, Jay. Let me see, let me see, uh, here, I'm going to throw a question up. You answer some football questions while I find okay. a uh, while I find, this is a good team name. CJ Ham Sandwich. Um. Go ahead and answer that one. Uh, Watson. Though I I think Slayton is more so in the mix than people realize, but I'll go Watson. Uh, all right. You know what? I, I'll say, I'll show you a couple. Okay. Um, what do we got here? Okay. Let's let's share let's share this screen where we sign off. And uh, give me one second. Share screen. I can only imagine what Adam's about to share with me. It's gonna. All I know is it's gonna. You didn't see me last night. No. Moving through channels and just decided to watch Dirty <laughs> Dirty Dancing instead of The Rock, and I have no regrets. Ah, uh, you know me. I'm so bad with I. The greatest TV mind out. I've seen every good TV show, but I have not seen Dirty Dancing or The Rock. Um, yeah, it's uh. Dirty Dancing, they're both great. I mean, if I were only going to watch one, it would be The Rock, but I've seen it 50 times. Yeah. Uh, Dirty Dancing, I've seen five times, maybe. But, uh, wait, what is Dirty Dancing even about? It's about uh, this girl who goes to like this summer getaway place with her family. She stays okay. there, and there's a dance teacher, Patrick Swayze, and she falls in love with him. Okay. It's, it's actually, I didn't think it was going to be a good movie. I only saw it within the last few years. It's, it's a very good movie. Okay. It's a great 80s movie um, and not all that cheesy. Wait, there's there's another tweet I wanted to share. Oh, see, what you, see what you think. I, I, I hate when I miss a good tw- uh, Adam Twitter night. I usually get to see him. For some reason, I wasn't on last night or whatever it was, and I missed a bunch. I love action movies, but here's something I could do without. Car chase scenes. I think they were once cool, but are pretty overdone now, and I can't wait for them to end. Yeah, I would agree with this take. This, yeah. is, one of your, this is one of your stronger takes. <laughs> I got to be, be honest with you. Uh, I don't love action movies. I just don't, man. I want plot. I want intrigue. I want mystery. I want, I want interesting things that make me think. I don't like too much action, and I, I, I'm, I'll tune it out. That's pretty lame. But Unless it's way, over I, the top, I, like Fast and Furious. Uh, the what's happening it, that that has really nothing to do with my political views. I those get populated. Oh, uh oh. So, oh, political so, Adam. Yeah, that is nothing. moral stance. I'm still Adam running for president. I'm still running for president. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, we'll, 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 you know what? You said you have no, you have a squeaky clean history, but people will go back and audit your rosters, and they will find Tyreek Hill. They will find Adrian Peterson. There, there, there's a lot of skeletons when it comes to who you rostered. Remember the Greg Hardy thing? Oh my God, I was so mad at the, at the Cowboys for that. Yeah, that was, I don't even. The Cowboys have so many off field issues, I can't even remember them. I it's true. I love. I actually enjoy being the butt of the joke if it makes if it makes the audience. Um, that is that is true. That to me, that's a sign of a great anyone. This is life. also a little bit true, and that makes me feel bad about what I said about Dirty Dan. Oh, gross! Thank you for putting that in perspective. <laughs> How old is she? I don't know. She's got to be eighteen. She's got to be. Uh, Even so, this dude's in his mid thirties. No, I don't think he's in his mid thirties in the movie. No way. All right. All right we got we're a few more questions here since so we've been a bit off topic. Best <laughs> I can pick up. Brian Robinson, James Robinson, Elijah Mitchell, Rashad White. For this week, my answer is Brian Robinson. For the long term, it's Rashad White for sure. So to play it how you need it. Okay. Um, uh, Because the matchup for Robinson's great. Yep. Team receives Kareem Hunt and Kyle Pitts. Derrick Henry team receives Brian Robinson and uh, and Hilliard. It's kind of a very meh trade for me. It's a handcuff uh, trade. Eh, I'm just mang this one with a yeah. C. Well, 
By the way, look at Brent's hair. You and I could never pull that. That guy is. That's better. a good head of hair. Now, I will say this. Mine is not as far off as Adams is from that great head of hair. But Brent, you've clearly dominated the hair game. But just, again, I can't believe we ever even saw like any kind of closeness in that poll. Like this is better than that. Look this, at that. This I'm getting a haircut tomorrow or Thursday. So this is me at my worst. Me at my best, I have a much higher hair ceiling than you. Oh, you do? What are you talking about? Yeah, you have the same hair every day. You're a high floor. And it's hair good. Guy. It's, it's a got a high floor and a guy. solid ceiling. <laughs> Hollywood Brown, rest of the season, our last question. Should I trade Hollywood Brown or will he get back to where he was? You're not going to get much for him, so I would, I would be patient and wait on him. All right. Uh, Knives Out is a great movie. Oh, I've seen that one. Movie. I've seen that one. It's one of the few I've seen, and it's an amazing movie. Those are my kind of movies. So you nailed it. I'd rather watch a Knives Out thousand times over like a dumb car chase movie with like good stuff going what about on. Die Hard? Oh, you know, I've never seen it, right? Oh, that's right. Oh, can you change that, please? You got to find a way. I you got to watch that. Before. My problem is whenever I sit and want to watch any of these movies you've recommended, I always find like a better show. Like somebody recommended The Patient. I binged that thing. It was amazing. Andor right now is phenomenal TV. And like I just find TV to be a so much better of a medium than a movie. You have 10 hours or 12 hours to tell your story instead of two. Uh, yeah, but you know, if you don't have time to, to binge watch a show, um, how long are uh, we have having our, no kids? Oh, helps. Yeah. YouTube poll uh, is up. How long are you waiting for a table? I only oh. eat fast food, 15 to 25 minutes, 35 <laughs> to 45. I'll wait well over an hour. Let me see the poll results. Thomas. I'm 15 curious. 15 to 25 is, is crushing it. 60 okay. out of the vote. Yeah. Okay. So we're, we're on the, we're on the right side of this one. Thank you all for watching and listening. Have a great night. And, and I know David A is back to hating you and, and he's, like, <laughs> he's right. Have a great night, everybody. <laughs> we'll talk to you tomorrow morning on fantasy football today. Oh, I almost hit the wrong button. Now we'll talk to you tomorrow morning.